Hello and welcome. You're watching CITV. My name is Steve Atkins. And on the couch next to me is uh, an old colleague of the show, Tim Jefferson from The Human Chain, uh, who has been uh, facilitating, mentoring, or whatever word you want to call it, this morning at the uh, Contacts Intelligence Spring Conference. So, Tim, thank you very much for that. And uh, thank you. welcome on the couch. Um, we've covered an awful lot of ground today. Um, now looking, we've looked at uh, projects at the UK, Europe and beyond. Now what do you feel, um, with what you've heard today and your experience uh, with some of the key messages from the implementations in Europe? I think uh, we've had a really good conference uh, today. We've seen some really interesting uh, demonstration of projects which are actually real. They're not just pilots and trials. They're now moving into real implementation. So that's of a combination of contactless cards, also the infrastructure. And I think one of the key messages that come out today is, is that the infrastructure, both for the point of sale terminals and also in the transit world, are really starting to drive some form of adoption. We've seen some really interesting um, clear messages uh, of how they uh, we move from a contactless card environment then into a mobile environment a lot of interest a lot of discussion around how we can actually uh, use the those in complementary fashion but in some ways it appears that the, the during one of the sessions this morning that there's a, a movement of for example the financial services market and the mobile phone industry mm. coming together uh, to actually provide services beyond just payment or mobile telephony type of services so services such as mobile advertising very clear branding messages uh, things that can be done now as well and it, one of the messages on Europe I think is the uh, don't wait for handsets mobile handsets with NFC mm -hmm. capability or contactless capability to come out but you can do things now so that's a turnaround in the last year since last year. Do you think it was a mistake that so many companies and so many uh, sectors of the industry uh, waited for, for handsets instead of just forging ahead and coming up with alternatives? I think it, it, it's, a, it's a common mistake. Uh, mobile, mobile telephony business and the mobile handset market is a very complex uh, mm -hmm. ecosystem. Uh, the mobile uh, handset manufacturers and SIM manufacturers will not manufacture handsets unless they get major purchase orders. It's a mass business. Mm -hmm. uh, they were nearly one billion handsets were sold worldwide last year. There's nearly a four billion handsets in the marketplace. There's obviously a replacement life cycle. The current economic crisis, for example, is slowing down that life mm -hmm. cycle. All the handset manufacturers in the world are under tremendous pressure at the present moment in time. Their margins are very thin. So what has happened is, is the, the mobile network operators, they're under pressure as well. They're not ordering the handsets and therefore mm -hmm. the, the handset manufacturers aren't doing it. The other thing is, is that I think there's a lot of people don't understand, it came out again this morning, is, is that the standards were approved last year for mobile handsets to have NFC capability, but they weren't actually fully fleshed out with the testing regimes and things like that. And they've only just been agreed really late last year, beginning of this year. And then from that, it's roughly about a year to be able to get those handsets into mm -hmm. the marketplace. So It was almost a clash of business models in a way, wasn't it? Correct. Yeah. I mean, and you've also got the, 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 the thing that at the present moment in time, uh, your handset replacement lifecycle, and very importantly, obviously, if you want to have NFC capability on the SIM, you have to have SIM replacement lifecycle right. as well. And that is much slower than handset replacement mm -hmm. lifecycle. The good news is, though, here in Europe is, is that the network operators actually want to reduce the number of handsets that they provide support for. So there is an incentive for them to actually uh, to, to, to deploy new handsets and increase the handset replacement lifecycle. Cycle. The problem also is, is that ultimately if the business case does not stack up for the mobile, ne uh, mobile network operators, they will not actually buy the handsets. Mm -hmm. And that is a critical. Now we believe, and we've seen it today, that the, we've seen two major carriers here in Europe. We've seen Orange, France Telecom Orange, and we've seen Telefonica 02 speak this morning. And both of those have clearly articulated that they are going to be providing services from later this year, the beginning of next year here in Europe. That is a major step forward. And they aren't just... NFC, uh, gorgeous NFC services, they're much broader. It's a range of services, a bundle of services. And that's really positive that's come out of this okay. morning.